One of the most common questions I get asked is, what kind of horse do I need for endurance? The short answer is basically any breed, as long as they're sound and fit. At the top levels, yes, Arabians are kind of the most prevalent. It's almost 100% of the horses in their FEI event. That doesn't mean that natives wouldn't make it to that level. But at the lower levels in endurance, you can see a diverse range of breeds, sizes and types competing and having fun. We went on Facebook and asked for you guys on Endurance Riders UK to send me photos of native breeds enjoying endurance. And here is a small selection of the pictures that were sent in. What I look for in an endurance horse is that they have sound and effortless movement. So they're kind of aesthetically pleasing, it looks like they're floating across the ground. Um, and that's because they're probably going to be more energy efficient and less kind of impact as they're moving, so less likely to go lame during the longer distances. The other thing is that they're super forward going and they love to go out and about. Some of the horses I've bought haven't been backed so I haven't ridden them and I didn't ride Qantas when I went to see them either. But if someone else is riding them or they're turned out for you to see them move, that they're, they're really up for it, they want to go, they don't need much encouragement and they've got that kind of go get it attitude. The other thing is personality. So you're going to spend a lot of hours training this horse and a lot of hours riding it so you need to get on with each other i like quite quirky kind of a bit silly maybe not difficult but challenging kind of personality um, and that's kind of what i find also has that kind of determination and you know, doing the, the longer distances you do need that kind of willpower in a horse to keep going a really important one, and your farrier will thank you for this, is if they have really good feet. Those feet are going to do a lot of miles, so it's good to start somewhere where you know, the feet are good to begin with. The other thing is having a low resting heart rate. Now this is trainable, as a horse gets fitter the, the resting heart rate will probably get lower. But if you're starting from a place where their low resting heart rate is super low, you'll probably do better in the vet gates and get through the vet gates a bit quicker. It's not essential though, Tizzy has a resting heart rate of kind of low to mid 40s and she still gets through vet gates in kind of under three minutes. I learnt the ropes of endurance on native breeds. My first endurance pony was a Mego and he was an 11 hand section A Welsh mountain pony, well known on the circuit as Fluffball because he was so fluffy and took so many clips a year to keep him nice and cool during endurance events. I competed in him up to 40 kilometres and our max speed was 11.2 kph and we had an absolutely great time. I was a junior at the time and juniors have to be escorted so I rode with either my mum or dad or both um, and my mum was on an Irish cob and my dad was on an Arab and they all went beautifully together. My second horse was Blind Tavy Ellen and she was a stereotypical Welsh cob. Big black with um, nice white stockings, big white blades, huge bum, loads of power in that back end. Um, and she competed up to 68 kilometers and did up to 13.8-ish, I think, kilometers an hour. So native breeds, they do take a bit longer to get fitter. Um, they aren't naturally as fast as the Arabs and they do take more crewing, more vigorous crewing, to bring their heart rate down quicker. But they still do really well through all the distances of endurance. 
After I learnt the ropes on native breeds, I moved on to Arabs because I wanted to be competitive and start my FEI career. My first Arab, you know, is Tizzy and we bought her when I was 10 years old. She was actually meant for my mum, but I stole her um, and mum never rode her again. <laughs> so she is 14 hands. She's super diddy. Um, she's competed up to 160 kilometres with 75 kg and her max speed is 20.8 kph. So for people asking, is my horse too small for endurance? The answer is probably no, because um, Tizzy is super diddy. Um, when it comes to FEI and carrying weight, I don't think it's so much down to size of horse, but whether they are comfortable carrying that weight. I've seen 15 three plus horses not comfortable with carrying weight. So you don't really know until you get there. The next Arab is Azid. He's 15.2. Um, he's competed up to 80 kilometers at a maximum speed of 13.8. He's a very different type to Tizzy. He's much leggier, um, much kind of straighter, kind of in his action and stuff. Um, he's only seven years old and I really want to slowly take him up through increasing the distances, increasing the speeds and kind of see where he goes. So you, you don't need to go fast to do the higher levels. And then we've got Qantas. So Qantas is 14.2. He's quite different again. He's much longer backed. He's a bit kind of chunkier than my other two. Um, and he has done zero kilometers and zero kilometers an hour. So how will I know when he's ready to start his endurance career? I have kind of six parameters that are personal to me um, of when I know my horse is ready to start competing. So the first is probably super obvious and that is that I'm really comfortable that all the tack is fitting well and I'm confident that the saddle isn't causing any issues, that the horse is comfortable in the bit and all the tack is performing at the distance as it should. My second one, and probably obvious again, but really important, is that they load and travel well. So I box out from here for training anyway, so they get lots of training for traveling, but part of endurance will be traveling to the ride, and you want to arrive with a super chilled, relaxed horse ready for competing that day. The other thing is that they're safe hacking alone or in company. If you have the opportunity to hack in company, get that person to trot off round the corner and keep your horse at a walk and vice versa. You want to know that you're comfortable when you're out on an endurance ride, people are gonna be coming past you and you might pass people, that your horse is willing to go past people and is happy with horses um, coming past and leaving them behind. You'll have a much nicer time if your horse is used to these things. My last two, they're not based on any kind of scientific evidence, it's just kind of my experience over the years. I like my horses to be able to come down and recover and come under 64 beats per minute within 10 minutes after doing moderate exercise. So doing about 16 to 20k of trot and canter, no crewing and their heart rate be under 64 within 10 minutes. This will vary from horse to horse and I think it's more important with natives that you kind of find their baseline with their heart rate. Qantas for example, I did his first kind of baseline training where his heart rate at and he was on 55 in under two minutes. The other thing is I like if I'm if I'm aiming for a 16 kilometer pleasure ride, I like to have hacked at home at least eight kilometers and the horse be super comfortable and it have been easy. If I'm aiming for a 40k novice, then I like to do between 16 and 20 kilometers hacking at home and everything have been super easy. They don't have to be fast, you can take your time, um, but I like to know that over that distance, the tack has been fine, we've been comfortable together and, and no issues are coming up. Most regularly ridden horses, so about three times a week in any discipline, are fit enough to do a pleasure ride between, between 10 to 12 kilometers an hour. So if your horse fits into that category, give endurance a go. The thing I love about endurance is there's no wrong horse horse there's no wrong tack as long as it's safe there's no wrong outfit you're not in a an arena with loads of people around you feeling judged you're out with your horse having a great time endurance is a really inclusive sport that allows you to spend time with your horse and learn how to keep them fit healthy and happy over loads of varied terrains when I asked for pictures of native breeds on Facebook I didn't expect to have such a huge response and it was so wonderful to see so many of you enjoying the sport of endurance so we thought we'd put a few more of the pictures at the end of here so you can see the diversity within the sport.
this video has inspired you to think my horse is right for endurance and give it a go. Um, if that is the case, we've got a couple of videos that might help you out. So we've got um, kind of going through the vetting and trot up training and also what to pack for your first endurance ride.